Ryan, do you think you could demonstrate right here, right now, how fast these sexual predators predators will show up in a chat room? Yeah. Fire your computer up. Let's do it. All right. I'm recording, so now I'm just going to say, hi, who wants to chat? And I named myself Ashley Female New Jersey, 13 Female New Jersey. Let's see how many private messages come in. Two already. Three. It's been like 10 seconds. Yep. Hey, want a full round? Hey, how old are you? Let me just copy that and send that to everybody because we got other messages coming in. What chat room are you in? Just a teen chat. Hey, you want to cuddle a bit? I, I didn't, I, I mean, I, I'm taking, I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt right now that, uh, that they didn't read the, oh, he's 47. 47 okay years old in a teen age? chat room. You got him in what? Five seconds. He's yeah. already messaging in. Oh yeah. There's a ton of, there's, I can't even keep up with them here because every time I click one, there's more on the list. Uh, he says he's okay. I said, are you okay with my age? He says, yes, age. 13, like my profile says. I got two more messages, so now we're at one, two, three, four, five. I'm 19, let's ignore the 19 year old even though it's disgusting. It hasn't even been 60 seconds yet. Okay, there's another guy. Here's the other guy. This guy's 15. Ignore him. That is a real teenager in a teen chat. Uh, uh, the 47-year-old says, I, he said age. I said 13 like my profile says. He said name. Ashley. And then another guy just messaged. How old are you? Okay, this person's a child too. So out of all of these... There's one guy here who is 47 years old, less than a minute, who wants to talk to a child in a teen chat. And I only said hi in the chat room, nothing else. Holy shit, dude. You, you jumped in a chat room, you called yourself Ashley 13, New Jersey. Mm -hmm. L literally less than 10 seconds. We have a 47 year old, one to, one to have with a, with a 13 year old girl. Yeah. Yeah, that's how quick it is. Like I, I googled teen chat. Uh, I'm in a different state, so I get different results here for you know the local teen chats. There was, there's no way for me to set it up. You know, all I did was say hi in the chat room and press enter. Uh, and you know, a bunch of messages came in. Some were from actual teenagers, as it should be in a teen chat. And uh, one of the guys, which you know, who knows if they really are teenagers? That's another thing. But one guy was open about that he was 47 years old and. He was completely fine with the age. Where where all is this happening? Is this happening? Just list off where this is happening. That's that that everyday people use all the time. Uh, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, Kick, WhatsApp, uh, Roblox, Minecraft, Xbox, PlayStation. Xbox uh, and PlayStation? Yeah, because you can chat with random people in games. Um, they could represent themselves as whoever they want. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it, the list goes on. Uh, anywhere where a human can communicate with another human, the child is not safe. So parents need to be watching that uh, and not just assuming, like, you know, if, if, you're, if your kid says, hey, I'm on the phone with my friend, which friend is it? You know, is it, is it one that I know? Um, like you can't be scared of being a helicopter parent because if your kid's aggravated at you for a couple of minutes for, you know, being overprotective in these scenarios, I think it's worth, it's not your fault regardless of what happens, but to save them from a life of trauma, I think it might be worth the extra couple of minutes or aggravating your kid to you know, see who they're actually talking to, see which, who their friends really are. And, uh, just spend that extra time because it could it could save a lifelong battle with trauma. This happened to somebody I know in in Parkland. You know, mm -hmm. I remember I used to live in Boca, so I got a lot of friends down there. Mm -hmm. Happened in Parkland. He's got a daughter, couple daughters, and she was she she was blackmailed by somebody and had taken pictures and 
it's 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 everywhere just as you just demonstrated it i mean 10 10 seconds less than 10 seconds and he and he's on there yeah is this is this the case every single time uh yeah yeah some of the guys want to chat for longer before they meet up in person but uh yeah it's it's that easy it's it's not good that it's easy but it is that easy to to find them they're out there and they are they're they're being predatory like you know like the name states how i don't i don't i don't know what to call it i don't want to call it a success rate but what is the percentage of people that you're talking to on here that will come and meet um Depends on how long you talk to them and if you can convince them that you're not a police officer. Would you uh, say the majority of them? Way more than the majority, yeah. 90%? Yeah. Over yeah. 90%? Um, it depends if they ask to meet or not yet, because sometimes it takes a while for them to chat. So I would say, yeah, like if, they, if they ask to meet, 95% per, plus if they ask to meet up. 95%, you think? Yeah. Damn. How did, how did Project Veritas get involved with you? Um, they saw the, a viral podcast of me talking about the website, and they were interested, and they said, well, I want to help you bring justice to this, uh, to, to what the other stations failed to, to bring justice to, and the FBI even failed to, or uh, all, everybody. Everybody failed me. I, I, I felt like they failed me. And Project Veritas said, hey, well, we will do something about this. We'll put our whole team on it. We're going to we're gonna we're gonna bring light to this. We're gonna bring these people out of the dark corners of the earth, and uh, and it, it made me feel like okay, I have I have a team here, you know, I have people that were, are willing to, you know, fly across the country and meet me in a 24-hour notice, which they did uh, to have a conversation. They they flew me out to New York to to do an interview. Um, you know, just off my word, you know, I could have been lying. I could have been a member of this. Who knows what they, what they, they didn't know who I was. So they just took my word for it and they gave me the most compassion and love that I, more, more compassion and love than I would have ever expected and still are to this day. What is this collaboration between you and them look like? How are they, are you, you're obviously feeding them all the information that you've uncovered so far. Are yeah. you still getting more information? Um, so no, so right now we're going off the data that I already have, which is so much, um, especially with Nathan Larson's websites, you know, right, the one we're focusing on at the moment is rapey.co and .to. Uh, so anyone that was on that list is going to be investigated. We have all of their information, um, or ways to find it. So we're just going to go down that list to keep exposing them in, in person. Um, and, uh, we found quite a few already. So it's it's only going to get more extreme, especially as the team gets bigger, and uh, hopefully we do some justice, put some more in prison, uh, uncover some secrets. How are you getting? How are you guys? So they sent me. So this interview is timed perfectly. We when Project Veritas starts to release this information, we're right behind them. We've talked to them. We're collaborating with them. Mm -hmm. We want to just dump gas and amplify what you guys are doing to get this word out. So what does this collaboration look like between you and them? You're feeding them the information and then how are they reaching out to these guys and, and how are they getting to them to come in and, and, and confess to this stuff? Um, they, so they have their own ways of dealing with undercover uh, operations and, and like filming undercover. Uh, but when we find the information on the people, you know, we're going off the database, we're taking the information per user, we're tying that to what we, we you know, we have some, some archived uh, images of when the website did exist. So we could say, uh, this user said this at this time or replied to this at that time, figure out who that user is, um, and then organize a team to go out there and meet them. But the process of finding out who they are is called o OSINT or Open Source Intelligence. And uh, Project Veritas has been doing that already for years, as well as me. Uh, it's, uh, I specialize in, in OSIN and, and obviously being a hacker, it just comes with the, comes with the territory. Um, so working together as a team, finding these people has been, you know, no different than what I would do on a daily basis, except it's just making a bigger impact.